In this video, we're going to go beyond the ideal gas equation and see how we can derive an equilibrium constant for real gases, which are not ideal. So for a real gas, what we're interested in is its chemical potential. So for a real gas, mu i of a given gas is a function of temperature and pressure and that is equal to the standard chemical potential at that temperature plus gas constant times temperature times natural log of its fugacity F divided by standard fugacity F naught. And we can remind ourselves that standard fugacity F naught is just equal to standard pressure which is equal to one bar. Because fugacity, if, as we recall, is really just the analog for pressure of a real gas, which um, makes all the equations for chemical potential and all those things behave nicely so that we can kind of treat it like an ideal gas. So it's the uh, hypothetical pressure that an ideal gas with those properties uh, would have for a given real gas. Okay, so that's its chemical potential. So if we have some reaction like if we have the reaction which we've been using for pretty much all of the series. I'll just go ahead and write it out. Um, all the news are stoichiometric coefficients and all of the capital letters represent chemical species. Again, all in the gas phase. Now they are all representing real gases, which are not necessarily ideal. Uh, so stoichiometric coefficients, chemical species, reactants and products. So the Gibbs energy of reaction is going to be um, the stoichiometric coefficients times chemical potential for uh, all of these here. So that's going to be nu C times mu C for reactant one or for product one, nu D times mu D for product two, and then subtracting out the reactants, nu A mu a minus nu b mu b. Okay, so this equation looks very similar to that which we use to de derive equilibrium constants for ideal gases. And indeed, we can follow the same logic that we used in that video for deriving the equilibrium constant kp. And what we'll end up with is a very similar expression that the, ener the Gibbs energy change of reaction is equal to the standard Gibbs energy change of reaction, which comes from the standard part of the chemical potential, plus the part which depends on fugacity or pressure, analogously for ideal gases. And that's RT log. And then we're going to have a reaction quotient here, or equilibrium constant. So we're going to have FC to the new C, fugacity of product C to its stoichiometric coefficient, same thing for product D, divided by the fugacity to the power of stoichiometric coefficient for the reactants, A and B. Okay, so um, using this equation here, um, the reaction is at equilibrium whenever the Gibbs energy of reaction equals zero. So the standard Gibbs energy of reaction is going to equal minus RT log KF. We're going to define this new equilibrium constant KF, which is the equilibrium constant in terms of fugacities. And that value is going to be given by, so KF, which like KP depends on T, is a function of temperature only is for this reaction, Fc to the nu C over Fd nu D, divided by fugacities of the reactants to their stoichiometric powers. So equilibrium constant in terms of fugacities is just the same as it was for pressures, but replace them as fugacities. And again, it's the reaction quotient evaluated at their equilibrium concentrations. 
So because this is not in terms of ideal quantities, but is in fact real, so is completely general for all gases, this is referred to as a thermodynamic equilibrium constant because of its generality and applicability to all gases at all um, parts of the state various parts of the state function. So it's it's applicable at all pressures, all temperatures, all compositions, etc. And as I said, this particular expression in terms of fugacities for real gases is going to be exact for all gases at all conditions.